I'm glad my hens are laying. I don't have much help around here with the hens in the garden since my husband went off to that war. We got married in Grand Rapids in 1862, and the next year he left to join the 102nd. My husband, Elisha, is one of the few colored soldiers who was promoted to the rank of sergeant in the U.S. colored troops. When we got married, we lived on a farm in Lowell, and Elisha had big dreams. He wanted to train to be a doctor. Maybe it was that injury to his hand when he was working in that sawmill in Lowell that made him want to leave farming and train to be a doctor. I thought it was a bad idea because farming was all I knew. I didn't know about anything else. But he couldn't really do much farm work with his hand so bad. But that thumb wasn't amputated by after that sawmill accident, it got amputated in the army. The letter that he sent me, let's see, it was February 1864. And I keep that letter with me. I think I have it right here in my pocket. This is what he said. I was detailed to go into the city of Detroit to obtain supplies for my regiment about the hour of 7 p.m. On my return to the regiment, I was set upon and shot by two Irish rogues. The thumb of my right hand broke at the main joint of my thumb, but I made it back to camp and the wound was dressed by Dr. Wesley Benson. After that, I thought my Elisha was going to come home but I should have known better. He wasn't gonna come home until those boys gave those wicked old slaveholders a taste of their own medicine. I think all the other soldiers looked up to Elisha because he could read and write. And of course, because he had some ranking too. Not many colored soldiers moved up the army ranks and earned stripes like Elisha did. And Elisha said that most of the soldiers in his regiment were runaways from slavery, and most of them could not even read or write because they had not been to school. Elisha told me about his own mother and father. They were born into slavery, so he couldn't wait to join the Union Army to help free all those poor people left down south in slavery. Elisha was lucky though. After his father got his freedom, he paid $500 and bought his wife's freedom. They were living in Morrow County, Ohio, and the Quakers let Elisha go to their school. You know, I can remember my own days in slavery. Even though my master was my father, he put me and my mother in his pocket, so they say, and sold us down the river to New Orleans. I praise God that a colored man on the boat taking us to Louisiana, he said that he could help us get away. He put me and my mother into a disguise that fooled that old whiskey drinking slave trader. We were at his mercy, but slowly but surely, with the help of many strangers, some colored and some white, we made it all the way to Michigan and all the way to freedom. Yeah, I could tell you about the days in slavery but I don't like to dwell on the bad times. Times are bad enough with all the men going off to that war. Can you believe it? Elisha was wounded three times in the same hand. 
The next letter that he sent me said, I was struck by a gunshot in the thumb at the Battle of Honey Hill in South Carolina in November of 1864. The company was charging on one of the enemy's batteries. That bullet passed through the lower portion of my thumb and struck my gun. The whole thumb was splintered and it was hanging by the skin and flesh, so it had to be cut off when I went to the camp hospital in Buford. You know, they told me that that wound was made by one of those newfangled bullets that they call mini balls, and I'm sure that's why they had to amputate that thumb. But even after that, Elisha didn't come home. He wrote me again. And he said, I still held the position of first sergeant until they named another man. I asked for a discharge, but Colonel Chipman asked me to stay with the regiment because he thought that I had a good moral influence on all the other soldiers. Maybe it was because Elisha could read and write, and he would write letters for all the other men who couldn't. I was always so proud of him for that. If his fellow soldiers knew where their wives and family were, Elisha would write letters for them. One of the men told Elisha that his wife wrote a letter to the secretary, Mr. Stanton. When I finally saw that letter, I was amazed at the nerve of that colored woman to write some, something so bold. I have her letter right here. This is what she wrote. Dear sir, I have taken the liberty to write you a few lines which I am compelled to do. I am colored, it's true, but I have feelings as well as any person. And why is it the colored soldiers let us can't pass backwards and forwards as well as the others. Mr. Stanton, dear, I think it very hard. We can't get any letters, and I wish you would please look in this matter and have things arranged so we can hear from our husbands if we can't see them. John Bailey is my husband. He went from Detroit. He is the man that Senator Howard wrote to you about last summer and tried to get a furlough for. Then he was sick. I have heard through others that he was very sick, and since then, I've heard he was dead. If he is living, I wish you would please grant him a furlough to come home. He was promised one when he went away, and he's been gone for over a year. And I do wish you would be so kind as to let him come home if he is living. I wish you would look over your books and see if he is still alive. I don't know who to write to, only you. President Lincoln is gone and he was our best friend. And now we look to you. And I hope God will watch over and protect you too through this war. Please. Write to me as soon as you get this and direct a letter to Mrs. Lucy Bailey, 190 Congress Street, Detroit, Michigan. Well, I better finish my work. It's better to keep myself busy so I don't worry about when Elisha is coming home.